Hi, I'm Mal, and welcome to another episode of Mini Model Makes. I hope, well, that this video is being made in the, the middle of the coronavirus epidemic that's sweeping the world. So, everyone in lockdown, I hope you're keeping safe and out of the way. I work in a hospital, so I'm going to work every day and, and working uh, sort of closely with some coronavirus patients as, as part of my work. Uh, please stay safe and, and keep safe, don't go out, don't spread things, do, do as directed and I hope not to see you in hospital over the next few weeks and hopefully uh, we'll all get through the other side of this and all be healthy and be great. Okay, so I've not had as much hobby time as, as some recently, obviously I'm still working, however I've managed to do a couple of things recently so I'm going to do a couple of videos now where I'll, I'll go through them where this one is going to be a Tau stealth suit team that I recently bought and painted up in urban camouflage so in this episode I'll go through the colour scheme that I used on these I will talk through some of the principles behind camouflage and painting camouflage it's a bit different to painting models normally and I'll show you the models themselves so without much further ado we'll crack on. Here we have my Tau Empire XV25 Stealth Battle Suit Team. In the box set you get three of them and a marker drone. Really cool models. I um, love when these originally came out some years ago. Joy to paint. Absolutely great. So First of all, I'd sort of experimented using the drone because there's some nice big flat edges on the drone to, to figure out my scheme. Uh, what I did with all the models was I undercoated them with Mechanicus Standard Grey Spray. And I picked out the underneath of the drone with a gunmetal colour. Let that dry and then used null oil over the model and picked out the the lines in the detail with it as well which started to help make it stand out a dry brush over the metal areas of iron breaker by citadel that makes that bit stand out and the lenses were done with Caliban Green. Then it was Warpstone Green, tiny dot of Moot Green, and then just a little dab of varnish in to make it appear sort of glass like. Now, the principles of camouflage are to distort images, break up things, make things not seem natural it's just one of a few principles that uh, armed forces around the world use to conceal uh, or to uh, throw an optical illusion over valuable assets or troops so the big things to think about with camouflage are what kind of scheme you're doing urban desert, uh, temperate, you know, sort of a forest. I mean, with Warhammer 40,000 you can do some really wacky things like lava worlds, uh, rust, mechanicum type, you know, Mars, red desert worlds, um, the, the world's your oyster. A good thing to look at for inspiration is uh, the American armed forces, because they especially in the, the mid 90s had some weird and wonderful schemes for pretty much any kind of environment the Americans had a, a, a cam or have a camouflage pattern for it you need to do is pick a uniform colour to begin with so for this urban scheme which is, is what I wanted to paint I really do love urban camo Mechanicus standard grey spray is, is your base I started using Dawnstone to begin with, but there was just not enough difference um, between the, the Mechanicum Standard Grey and the Dawnstone. 
so I went lighter and in the end went for administratum grey what I did was that was painted on some big areas and um, what I've, I've tried to do with this cam zoom in sorry get things into focus I'll just move the other way is I'm using straight lines because it's an urban environment normally man-made structures buildings walls you know they'll have corners they'll have angles so I didn't really want it to appear rounded or blotchy like a natural environment would be that's that's the first stage of the camouflage um, and then what I did with the administratum grey was I paint on some quite large shapes but straight lined edges so not quite it's sort of weird shaped squares and things and and quite a bit of that covers up the Mechanicum standard grey I then started using triangles and picked out some more areas with Corax white so what you're trying to do when you start laying up these colours is with the white if you see it's some of it's over the Mechanicum grey some of it's over the administratum grey so that's another facet of another ability of camouflage is to overlap things to help build that that layer up that distortion up which is is the effect you trying to you trying to achieve then finally over the top of that triangles again but in a bad and black and same again, tried to go over a little bit of grey, a little bit of white, a little bit of the, the administratum grey as well. Mix up your sizing. Uh, you, you're trying not to make things look uniform. Null oil in all these little recesses to pick it out and give it depth. What you don't need to do with camouflage is actually highlight what you're trying to what what camouflage is trying to achieve is to to remove shine which is is one of the the principles that can give someone or something's position away you don't really want to be highlighting the models because it, you know camouflage pattern uh, that you're trying to deaden that effect so there's there's no need to be too fancy with your highlighting which is good so that's the drone the bases uh, normally with a base I like them to be distinctive and, and stand out from a model Games Workshop certainly recommend that as well however <laughs> the whole point to everything being in urban camouflage is that they're in a built up or urban type in environment so I didn't really want to put them on desert bases because um, you know <laughs> defeat the object so when it's just the Mechanica Standard Grey Spray on the base and it's dry brushed with Tyrant Skull which is one of the uh, Citadel sort of dry paints absolutely brilliant look paint superb really simple and effective base there that's it done, done in a nutshell really what you can do to give it a bit of extra depth after the Mechanica Standard Grey if you want put Null Oil over the top of it then dry brush the tyrant skull and that will stand out even more as well but really effective there so that's the drone I'd say the drone was my guinea pig and finalised my scheme and figured about how I'm doing it then we have uh, a little bit the three models themselves I went with the two pulse blasters whatever they are you'll have to forgive me it's been many years since I've done Tau and I can't get the codex at the minute because no one's got one They're rare on eBay with this lockdown so um, I will get one it's just won't be too this is the fusion blaster which I've put on the Shazwee and the little drone controller which has gone on the back there so with the actual models themselves what I've tried to do is not completely coat them in camouflage less is more in, in this case 
So I began with the base coat of the Mechanica Standard Grey. And then I've picked out, I can zoom back in now, forgive all this zooming in and out and things. Picked out the leg armour as if it's like a, a, a basic one coloured suit. That is using Dark Reaper. Over the Dark Reaper I gave it a Null Noil wash to give it some depth. And then what I did was I used the Dark Reaper again, really thinned down. Sorry, I'm trying to get a good focus for you guys. Uh, to, to highlight those areas, just sort of the raised areas a little bit and make them stand out. His knife is just black, highlighted with the eshing grey on the edges. The little gold areas to make them stand out, the gold areas are the Balthazar gold and Agrax wash. Then Gehenna's gold highlight over the top of that and a tiny bit of Sycorax bronze. It's just to make them stand out. The set badge I've done in red just to make it a bit different and that is Mephisto on red with the Null Noil wash to go into the recesses on it again and then Evil Sun Scarlet as a highlight of the, sorry I'm pulling it out, that's Evil Sun Scarlet just to match kind of the little set markings as well which I've put onto them. So that's the squad markings there on the helms. And then what I've done is the is it the Shaz Lars, who were the normal line troopers, have one bar. And the Shazwe, the sergeant, has two, just to separate him out a little bit. I know he's got the fusion blaster as well. Fusion blaster, I've drilled the barrels. Same metal as the dr drone. Um, gun metal, then the null oil wash. Then over the top of that, a iron breaker, bit of a dry brush highlight. I've not really gone with heat bloom on the fusion blaster because Tower are kind of known for their amazing technology. So I've just kind of, unlike the Imperium who've got exhaust fumes and scorch marks and plasma blasts everywhere, I thought the Tower would have some kind of amazing cooling system for the weapon so uh, at the moment I've not really weathered the weapon um, it's the 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 casing of the weapon is Mechanica standard grey and that's highlighted with Dormstone so the way I've, I've done the camouflage on these models is he's is, is wearing his bodysuit which is one colour the backpack I've also done one colour that's the metal recipe um, the uh, inner areas of the, the jetpack are the um, Dark Reaper. I've already gone through the gold, and that's your Mechanica standard grey with a bit of Dawnstone highlighting on it. So I've gone for the actual armour plates themselves as, as being camouflaged on top of the normal coloured bodysuit. So it's that less is more. Um, you'll go crazy if you're painting your entire model camouflage you really will same principle behind the drone the administrator grey is some weird sort of four sided shapes and then the corax white and the black are triangular it's straight edge you know straight lines to, to make it appear more the other thing that you, you need to look at when you start to do things like this is to make sure you've got on corners a good patterning because that's breaking up the actual shape of the model itself you know the, if you make sure you've got some white or some black or all on different corners it helps break up that actual shape makes it not stand out as being something that shouldn't be there kind of thing so yeah make sure you get some black and or some white on some of these corners make sure they're not you know it's uniformly grey everywhere because it, it, it's another way of making the model appear 
to someone instead of it being camouflaged. What I did with the, this is the knees are camouflaged up, so are the feet. The weapon isn't because it's, it's just a bog standard weapon you'd get out of an armoury. They wouldn't really camouflage them all up. Um, so it's all his armour plating really, the, the jetpack's the same, it's not camouflaged. And then on top you've got your little drone controlling device. So that's camouflaged up as well, just to make it not stand out as much. The green is exactly the same as the drone, it's the Caliban green, warp stone, a little dot of moot green, a little uh, bit of hard coat just to make it appear a bit sort of glass like. It's hard to really see it on there. And that's it, that's I've done these models exactly the same way. Black and grey with the metal casing on the blasters. Red markings, red set markings there. Also on this on these fists you can see I thought that's like a little tactical readout, so I've done that in green so that you know they'd be able to look at the wrist and see some information or whatever. That's my phone going off, so my apologies there. And that is it, that's my little team. I'm gonna do some stealth, uh, not stealth suits, some crisis suits next uh, in the same way. So when they're done, I'll probably try and do a little video on those as well. Hope you enjoyed those guys. I hope you on board some of the principles behind uh, camouflage patterning, what, what it, camouflage is trying to achieve, the fact that it's trying to break up the shape, shine. From my army days, there was about seven S's which, you, uh, which give you position away. Um, but shape and shine are a big one that camouflage negates. It's been many years, I can't remember all of them, my apologies. And that's the reason why we camouflage things. This would work on tanks, exactly the same. Make sure you, you, your camouflage is going over angles and lines and corners you, to really break up the shape of the tank as much as possible. And that's it, that's how I've painted these. That's my thinking behind the camouflage. Hope you've enjoyed them and I will wrap up the video. So there we have it. That's my little video about the principles of camouflage. I've shown you my Tau stealth suit team and I hope that's given you some ideas, especially about urban camouflage and how you would apply camouflage to anything, vehicles, armor, uh, people. Hope you've, you've got some hobby tips to take away there and try and your models. Uh, if you are painting stuff up in camouflage and you've seen this video and it's been any help to you, Please, in the comments below, put some pictures up. It would be really cool to see uh, other people's hobby out there, especially during this time of the coronavirus outbreak where we're all in lockdown, staying safe. Just get in touch. It'd be great. I know I've not done many videos recently because I have been quite busy with work, but it would be really nice uh, to get some more subscribers. So please say like, subscribe, and share this video. That would be awesome. Let me know you're watching them. Uh, let me know you're staying safe, what hobby projects you're doing, if there's anything you'd like me to go through uh, I might be able to paint it up and, and show you and that's it really guys I have got a Mini Models Make Facebook page uh, come and hit me up there as well if you want join the little community that'd be great it'd be really nice if this channel takes off it would give me the uh, impetus to do some more videos for people if I had more subscribers uh, keep doing your hobby, take care, see you soon, bye for now.